Some of the most overlooked amps in the Axe FX3 are the FAS models, which aren't based on any real-world alternatives. They're kind of like, uh, you know, if you could build impossible things from tubes in the real world. Uh, that sentence doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know what I mean. It's sort of like there are obvious limitations on the hardware that we make real amplifiers like these out of, uh, and the FAS amps are basically not improvements, but they're tweaks on real world amps that bring them into sort of a realm where it's like, you know, for example, the FAS modern amps are kind of like a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier, but without the super boomy low end. And you have the FAS lead amps are kind of like a Mark series, but they're a little less fizzy and a little smoother and things like that. So I'm gonna to try to get through all the FAS guitar amp models. What we're gonna start with is we're gonna go through them I'm just going to play and scroll through the scenes. I've got two presets here that I will upload. And basically what we're going to do is I will give you the all knobs on noon version of all of these. And then I will go through and tweak the ones that I think need tweaking. This is a PRS SC245. Let's start with FAS Modern number one. And then I'll put a little caption uh, telling you the amp and IR on everything. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, there you go. That is a very brief overview. Uh, there are a couple of amps, for example, the Class A amp there that I use a different IR for, and I also think the FAS Rec and the FAS Brown. I use a Greenback Impulse and I use a Celestian Blue Impulse. The rest of it was all uh, the York Audio Mesa Vintage 30 mixes. So let's go back. I think the modern amps sound really good straight up, and you don't really have to do too much to those, which I think is really cool. All I would do and these are my, this feels like a cop out. My tweaking tips for the FAS Modern 1 and 2, just go into the preamp section and select like T808 Mod, that's one of my favorites at the moment. And uh, yeah, just select the input boost and it's gonna make the amp sound even better. Have a listen with it off and then on. <laughs>
that's FAS Modem 1 and 2. Uh, with the way these presets are set up, you just gotta make sure you're on the right amp block. As you uh, saw there, I was turning the drive on and off and going, this isn't doing anything because I was on the wrong block. But FAS Mod and 2 is probably my favorite out of the whole bunch. And as you can hear, hitting it with the 808 Mod Preboost, uh, that's just a fantastic sounding modern high gain rhythm guitar sound. You don't have to do anything. Uh, modern 3 is, I guess, their take on a, like a Mark series amp. The way I kind of guess that is when you go to preamp, uh, actually, no, I'm totally full of garbage. I'm thinking of something else. Modern 3, at the stock setting, sounds like this. This is kind of like a more mid-forward version of Modern 2. I better check that while we're here, Modern 2 has the tone stack post, and Modern 1 should also have the tone stack post as well. Thinking out loud, might cut this, might not. Okay, I'm crazy. Let's go to scene four, because that is the 6160 model, and this one, I'll just save that so it doesn't say 6160 brown and confuse everybody. So we're over here, and this one again really benefits from a front end boost. You know, you do the, the classic thing, T808 mod, I think is, uh, the one for this, have a listen to it with it on. If you like periphery and you haven't had much luck with the 5150 model, try this. What I like to do on this amp is just basically boost the bass and back the input drive off a bit, and you can Pull it, pull the mids forward again if you want more of that like modern periphery thing. It sounds like this. Or you can pull the mids out if you want more of that sort of classic 5150 scoop thing. master volume down a little bit and do what I did there and increase the presence depending on how much fizz you like. So that's a 6160. Moving on, the next one I've got is the FAS Hot Rod and this is kind of in the like Friedman Splorn category somewhere in there. At the stock settings it's pretty good. <laughs> But to me, it just sounds like you need to sort of boost the high end. So if you crank the treble up a little bit, push the mids as well, you can even back off a little bit of bass. I guess it's probably like a plexi style circuit. Add a bit more presence, you get this. <laughs> Basically, they just push the mids in the treble a little bit. Um, you can play around with the presence control as well. Again, these amps all sound pretty good near the default setting. So if you don't like to tweak, they're good amps to use for that reason. And that's kind of like Warren Demartini in a box. Actually, I need to hear this. Input drive a little bit lower. SD1. <laughs> And 
and that's kind of got that honk that we uh, associate with hot rodded amps from the 80s. So FAS lead, these are probably the amps I was thinking about with the tone sack. If you have a look at the preamp, the tone sack location is pre gain, which kind of indicates to me that, hey, it's probably some kind of riff on a Mark series amp. Uh, the stock setting. <laughs> Okay, let's do this. Let's pull a little bit of mid-range out of that and leave the bass kind of where it is. Maybe just pull a little bit out. And we might push the treble again. This is just shaping the gain. And then let's go to the output EQ. And I'm going to set it to the Mark Series EQ. This, I feel, is something that would be cool if it was stock on this amp. Like, the, well, I should say default. And we'll just kind of, you know, give it a gentle V or a not so gentle V. Hey, there's a sort of Mark series thing. It's very, very bright. So I'll go easy with that 6600 slider. I'll pull a bit more mid range out, and a little bit of 240, and boost the bass a bit more. This is cool. <laughs> tight one if you crank the input drive on that. Uh, again, Mark series territory. And as you can hear, as the gain goes up, the bass needs to come down. Probably even more than that. preamp boosts as well. Yeah, that sounds really good. So it's cool, I guess, for the riff on the Mark series Metallica Dream Theater kind of thing. Uh, I'll just skip over scene seven and we'll go to FAS lead. Two, this one has a tone stack post, so you basically don't need to do those tricks. Stock settings. open, sort of thick, chewy, gluggy lead sound. Gluggy doesn't sound like a very nice way to describe a tone, but this one feels really good. So FAS lead two, I don't know what that's based on, but sounds good for playing lead guitar. And then the last one in this preset is the Brutals one. At uh, stock settings, it sounds brutal. <laughs> This is one where you can basically do nothing except put a boost on, and it sounds amazing. And if you want, again, more of the like modern genty thing, push the mids all the way on this app. kind of got that like uh you know very quick thrack to it and the sort of honky mids which work really well in that style of music okay let's go to the next preset i'm actually just going to hit save on this so i save all those tweaks and over to the next preset we'll have a we'll keep up with the high gain amps and let's go to this should say brown not hot rod because it's a brown model what i have done here is I've just gone stock settings because I think this amp is designed basically to get your brown sound at the stock settings with this uh, 4x12 Basket Weave G12 H30, so the Heritage 30 speaker by Celestion. Uh, this is actually a legacy cab, and uh, yeah, sounds pretty brown to me. Yeah. 
That is not how you play Unchained. That's a bit better. And yeah, that one sounds pretty cool with the vintage 30 impulses. So again, that's using the H30s. If we just go with the V30s. <laughs> We have to turn the presence back down a little bit. Maybe back down to about two. And depending on what era of Eddie you want to go for, you can add or subtract gain there. This isn't really the right guitar to do it with, uh, but I think it sounds pretty good if you're playing like a Wolfgang or a Super Strat or something. So that is that one. The FAS Crunch sounds like this. All I would do with that one is pull a little bit of bass out and bring the input drive down just for more of an ACDC kind of thing. So that's kind of getting the ACDC thing on there. And what's next? FAS Rhythm. I've got this paired with a Celestian Blue Impulse at the moment, and it sounds like this. But with the V30s, it sounds like this. As you can see by the tone set, there's probably another riff on the Mark series. So if you sort of go for a similar trick with all the EQ and the output EQ, set it to the Mark. I think this one's just the easiest one to use because there's only five bands. You kind of get this kind of thing, like a chunky rhythm sound. <laughs> It's not very chunky, actually kind. I, I would describe that as wiry. With more gain, it sounds a bit chunky. And with an input boost, I really, really like this model with V30s. Have a listen. There with the USA C++ for Mark series tones, I think. I really dig that. I'm going to hit save. And then we've got the train wreck model, well, the FAS wreck, which I have paired with this Greenback Impulse, which just kind of gives you that screaming Marshall on 11 sound. And then you can do this. Turn <laughs> the level down. Turn all the EQ up to 10. Sounds pretty fun. So good to play. It's it's like playing a saggy tube amp, basically. Uh, the response under your fingers uh, is one of those sort of tones that just makes you want to keep playing guitar. <laughs> That is that one, and I think the last one is, hopefully it's the last one, because you guys are probably sick of listening to me talk about all of this, is the uh, Class A amp. So stock settings, it's, again, I don't really have the right guitar for this, but... So let's do this. Let's turn the high cut down like you would on a real Vox. And just pull a little bit of that bass out because it's a little bit thumpy at the moment.
That's cool for drive tones, and then if you turn the input drive down, it's really nice and jangly. I might play in the middle position. So for sort of country tones, that one is really cool. Um, yeah, diving into these amps and playing around with them has been a real eye-opener for me because some of them sound amazing at the stock settings with just a boost in front of them, and some of them you have to really tweak out. But because they are loosely based on classic circuits uh, with a lot of, you might say, improvements, you might say just modifications that uh, could or couldn't actually be done in the real world, you just have to approach them I guess with an open mind and just tweak the knobs until it sounds good. And I think they're in that category of amp, which I think is really cool where it's hard to make them sound bad. So if you're somebody who's not into tweaking, try the FAS amps in the Axe FX3 or the AX8 or the XFX2. And uh, yeah, go and, go and make some music, have some fun, riff out. And I'll put these presets up for you guys to check out. And that's it. Yeah, if you enjoyed this, hit subscribe. I'll see you all around.